Welcome back. Today we're going to do a lesson in history with Kelly Flytine. This is a uh, this is a fun one for me because it's <clears throat> it's got a little history to it. I started tying when I was five years old, and when I was ten years old, I tied a box of flies for my grandfather, and it was I gave it to him. And it was lost in time for about probably over forty years. And my brother, or my brother, my cousin Brian, who's a very famous guitar guy, uh, builds guitars, and he, when his father died, he cleaned out his house and he found this box of flies. And it, it's really, really cool. It's one of my most treasured memories on life, in life, that uh, because mostly multiple things. But one, my mom and I built this box. It's a wood box. My mom was a really talented woodworker, but I built this when I was 10, and then again, and I sent it to my grandpa, my, my cousin finds it like, you know, 40, 50 years later, I don't know how long it was, forever, it was it was, but I built it in 1968, and he finds this thing, and he sends it to me, and he says, I figured it was yours, not because I'm a fish guy, but because he says, the Christmas card, Merry Christmas, Grandpa, and you spelled Christmas wrong, <laughs> so I was, I was marked for life, but it's just really cool. It's it, for me. It's like this this really history thing, you know. For uh, and I, and not only that, but I get to show Johnny. Even when I was ten, I had better proportions than he does. But uh, it's the thing I wanted to show you about this, other than picking on him, on this fly. This was a when I and I'm going to do this fly today because I fish this fly a lot, and it's or I don't fish it a lot anymore. But I did for I mean. This would be my first streamer, really, when you go back in time. This is one of my dad's favorite streamers. But it's also, you know, we're, we're coming back to a lot of these old, and I've been tying a couple of these old school flies lately. But this was just really cool because it was the first streamer I ever fished. And it was the only fit, uh, one I fished other than a Royal Coachman. Those two flies were really probably, man, I mean, ever. I mean, probably until I was probably eight, 10 years. I mean, until I, I saw a gray ghost, I think, or something, but I mean, the, and we call this the Henryville. I think Jeremy calls it the Henryville, or asked me, and I said, yeah, that's a great name for it. I, it was a squirrel tail. But when I started fly tying, my dad had me tie this little bluegill grub. Uh, it was a little wet fly. It had an orange body and a little bluegill thing. But then, and then he had me tie a Henryville special wet fly and a queen of the water, same fly, different color, and this thing. And so, and, and when I got thinking about this fly, because I've caught a, a, just a bajillion fish on that little squirrel tail minnow, and the thing about it is it's, it's a, a really incredible learning tool. If you learn how to tie this fly, it's super fast. You can vary the colors and blah, blah, blah. You can do all that stuff. But it's a really good, it's a good learning fly, but it's also one of those flies, old school as hell, but it fishes like crazy. And so, especially in the early season, when you look at your young of the year, Especially when your minnows are around, I mean, you know, you're not you're not your fry fry too, but more of your day style flies. These little black and you know silver and black back flies, and so it just it just hunts, and so and it's super simple, and so it's a really easy fly to, to get started with. And we've been doing a lot of the the old school flies lately, just because they're fun, and so and, and and super simple. And we're getting just a ton of feedback that you know. People are really digging doing the old school stuff and the old sets and stuff like that. So we just, it, it just thought it'd be kind of fun. But anyway, it's going to be a super simple fly. We'll go through it really quick. Uh, I'm using, on this one, I'm using a, a 2220. Uh, the, the hook is not really relevant to, my, I mean, if you're going to use a 3X, this is a 4X long 6. You can go to a 3X. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you like. Uh, I, the original was done on a limerick bend. This is just the closest to the original fly that I did. So uh, <clears throat> the tail's going to be a little piece of duck quill, if you're, goose quill, doesn't matter what you're using, just a red. And that could be, this could be substituted for a lot of stuff. You could just use red fibers off a of hackle. You could use red uh, uh, pheasant crest or anything dyed like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The rib is going to be just medium uni thread oval. Uh, you can use flat. That's fine, too. It doesn't matter. You're going to use four-strand floss. Um, this is just 
there's a lot of there's a lot of new flosses out. You can use whatever you want. You know, I, I'm going to use traditional because it's four strand rayons that I probably I don't even know if that's what I used back in the day. And that the wing's going to be just uh, squirrel tail. And again, you can blend these up. If you're using fox squirrel. You can have box squirrel, gray squirrel, black squirrel. You can use whatever. It was just this is kind of a this set. This kind of just tail, body, wing was just a traditional set. It was just something, you know, everybody did pretty much the same kind of deal. And so, and you can see it's very simple. You could add a throat. I didn't have a throat on this one, so I'm not going to, but you could add one real easily. And so, uh, on we go. So, on the thread I'm using, I'm just going to use, you know, usually I tie with GSP. I'm going to use, this is uh, monocord, just regular 3 op monocord. And so, on this fly, there's no, you know, you're not going to go out and buy one of these, but you see it's just, it's got kind of a bigger head on it. And that was kind of tradition back in the day. So I'm going to leave a little bit extra room there to build a, a head. And I'm going to come in here. And I basically have done this my whole life. Very young. I read an article. I don't know who did it, where, when, what. But it was about bumps and things like that. And I, I was always, you're always trying to eliminate bumps in your fly. And so, especially when you work with flosses, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tie this in right here, right at the head, right where I was going to start the head. I'm going to come back and again, this is a really good uh, learning tool, especially because I'm getting a lot of people saying how much this, these things help them to go through this basics. And this is something that you learn when you, as you, as you perfect your craft, if you, if you really learn to do your tension on this on this stuff, and you get nice even wraps. That's how you begin this stuff. It's like it's teaching yourself thread control. You hold your bobbin in the same position. Try to keep this distance the same as you just work your way back. Right. Try not to do. Try not to go down tight like that, and then come up and start over. Try to keep that distance the same, inch, inch, inch whatever it is that you like. And then if you do, if you end up going down like this and then picking it back up. You'll have less tension on one, more tension on the other. And ideally, I mean, fly tying is thread control. And so you just keep doing it the same tension all the way back. Get that on the side. Finish your finish this at the, the ascent of the barb where it's going up. Get this off here to the side a little bit. Now we're going to take for the tail, this is just duck quill. And again, this is why I said this is a good learning fly. You can learn to do a lot of things with rudimentary things like setting this tail. It's no different when you set this tail and it is when you do a match set of wings like on a hair's air or any of your traditional wets or, or for that matter, no hackle. And you could use, depending, if you, I said earlier, if you were using a goose, goose uh, primary, you could use the biot side. There's two sides to a feather. You've got your quill side and your biot side, the short ones. And you frequently see biots used for, you know, tails for like uh, uh, salmon fly wet thing, or nymphs and stuff like that. I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to use a, the quill side. I'm going to tie this in here. And when I use these things, I kind of I go in here and I just kind of look. Usually the bottoms are just a little soft for me. They're just usually that's where they're not quite as well developed. So if you come up just a little ways into your feather and get rid of the junk down here, you'll have a you'll have a better feather in the bottom. I don't need a lot of it, so I'm just going to come in here and just cut just stick your bobbin in here and. Whatever, I mean, whatever you like. If you don't like it, just put it back together. And you can always, you can always add or subtract, all right? So I'm going to have this just, not a big tail, just a, just a, there's no way to tell you that there's a right or wrong way. And I, and I harp on this constantly anyway. It's what you like. I'm going to have this friend uh, from Chicago. He, he tied these, he, he was doing these parachutes one time. And he brought him in there like this long. I thought it was the dumbest looking. He kills it on those things. He's, you can see him better. <laughs> you know, it's what you like. If it still fishes, it still fishes. So, I mean, I try to keep a little bit with tradition. But if you want a thicker tail, thinner tail, whatever. And so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do this. I don't know. I, I, there's no way you could go up here and you could match this one. I'm going to make it about a quarter length of the bottom. There's, there's no set on this fly. There's no set. So how I'm going to do this before I go on, because I said earlier it's a great teaching tool. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to set the length of this. Am I blocking you there? Yeah. Set it like that. I forgot about the angle thing. I must be using the way it was. 
So when you set these things, when you set a match set of wings, you come in and you, you just have, if you had two of them, so example, if we we're going to do a, a hair's ear whip, and we've got a video of, about that anyway, you can see it. But you come in here, and there's a lot of mystery to this setting this wing. Uh, I don't know why, because it's about the simplest thing on earth. But as long as you pinch this, come up and give yourself your pinch wrap, and hold it really tight, pull straight down. It, it wouldn't matter if I had two wings in here or a single wing. And so now I've got my tail right there, and there it's set. Work this forward, and this is this is. Oops, I misspelled that. I'm going to work forward here with this body, and I'm going to cover this. Mostly, you know, there's not a lot of build to this quill. If you were to, if you were to cut that off earlier, that would be fine too. But I'm. What I was kind of getting at is the more you do this repetitive thing where you just set your materials on here and you and do the like running this thread body all the way up and all the way back it's going to give you it's going to give you a better feel for your bobbin it's going to have you learning your tensions better so there's that and you could have by the way you could have tied in your floss up front and came right back over top of it so i'm going to tie it from the back this is four strands <coughs> Excuse me. You can see it's all it's all four strand here, and if if you're doing a smaller one, I always just just real light damp, you know, just a little bit damp, so I'm working with it just while I'm working like that. So if you wanted to do this double strand, triple strand, it, it's whatever you like. One just builds a little bit faster. So I'm going to come in here, same thing, pinch wrap right there, move forward. forward here and you're just going to keep that nice and even and again you're learning your thread control keep your materials on top of the hook and it'll just tell you whether you're getting nice even tension and I'm flaring out there nice and even blah 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 roll under there. Right before we get there, I want a little bit cut it off just so it'll come right here. Safely, that's where our head's going to be. Make sure you leave room for it. And then you're just going to, same thing as with your, same as your thread, you're going to learn now, I'm not going to use the rotor, you're going to go old school. You're going to just let that flatten out, nice smooth wraps. If your hands are destroyed like mine, if you've got a lot of burrs in your hands, you know, you can take a, a emery thing or whatever they call those, those emery boards, and you can kind of knock the rough edges off your hands. Uh, it'll, you can fray this quite easily. If you stay away from it a little bit, like I'm out here, that'll help. If you come in close and drag that through your fingers, you'll fray that rayon. And so just stay back just a little bit. And you're allowing those four strands to flatten out, so you're going to get a nice flat body. Just, again, working forward. Am I, am I going to run under there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Up to the head. Again, the size of this head is completely up to you. Now I'm just going to take the, the oval tinsel. And the reason it, like I said, you can use flat, you can use oval, use whatever you want. I was, I mean, this is what I had when I was a kid, so I'm just duplicating what I have. This, then how you set these to how you space them, again, completely up to you. There's no real rule. I just, it, the rule is don't drop it. Oops. There's no real rule. If you do what I just did, like make my second mistake in history, uh, if you if you do that, I don't. I, I like to start over. I'm going to wreck my tail here. Um, and this is another one where if, if you're using oval, 
I just dropped it. What I meant when I said that was when I dropped it, don't just kind of pull it tight and start over. Go back and make sure each one's nice and tight. And again, with this stuff, if you stay forward of it just slightly, same as the, the floss, and you don't pull it through your hands constantly, you won't unravel. Because what this is, a little tinsel is just tinsel wrapped around cord. And so you can kind of fray it. And I'm going to come right here to the side. So now we got our cute little rib body. Keep that underneath there. And I'm kind of building up. I got a little bump right there I don't like, so I just stuck my thumb into it. I have kind of a big head, and we want that. And you know, this is even, actually, you could probably come back even like this. And some of these, I remember this, I thought it was, I just thought it was Mr. Pro Jock, and this happened. I saw one much later in life where we painted eyes on. And so your head's got a little bigger. I just love it. It was a blast because, you know, it was just one more thing. When you paint this white eye, you just model, uh, model paint, which is probably why we're all weird people my age because the stuff is really bad to paint on. So I want to show you something about squirrel tails. This thing here, you know, not all your squirrel tail is the same. And so one of the things when you get down here at the bottom, and especially when you're young, tired, or you're just frugal, People want to use every bit of this. And this this is, I've already, I started cutting it before I remembered I wanted to show you that. This hair down here is really short. And as you see, when I pick it up, it's kind of blended. It's This one's more black, and there's not much brown down here. And so what I do is I just go in to stop any thought of using that. I go in here, and I cut. And this is right where it stopped when I remembered I wanted to show you this. You can see how short those are, and there's not show it in the focal point. Not really much there. And so, then I move right forward just to there and you can see I cut these off and you'll see that they start getting very uniform where the black line is nice and even. The tips are nice and even and you start going forward and if you, you know, I'm not going to use that and I may not tie another Whitney, another one of these for a decade. Who knows? And so I'm going to go forward to where I know the hair when I stand it up. When I stand this up like this, don't cut it, don't cut it laying down because you're going to have, it won't be the same length of the, the tip there. And so you stand it up and you can see this nice clean braid. And that's what I'm looking for. So I don't, I don't get caught up in that junk in the bottom. And so when you stand these out, stand them at a right angle to the tail itself, kind of look at it because we're not going to stack you could stack it but i'm not you're just getting this i, I kind of like that little bit of i want it exactly the same length i want it to be just a little bit random and so i'm going to come in here and i can look at it i take it off to the side i get a very good visual i don't have to wonder if they're all stacked i will get in here and just keep it off to the side like that and cut them off now we're going to have a perfectly stacked wing like with any of them, you're going to have random hairs in there. You're going to have some long, some shorts. So come into the black stripe in here and just grab it by the tip and get that junk out of there. That was just the shorter, not quite developed hairs. We're going to make sure it's nice and clean. Just, I mean, this is a super simple fly. But there's little tricks like that in all fly tying. It's not really that it's any, it's not really a trick. It's just getting rid of the junk. you got to You've got to cull some of the junk out of there, and you'll get a cleaner fly. So now, this is, there's, there's basically two types of hair. There's hollow hair, and there's solid hair. Most all tail hair is solid, which means there's no compression to it. So you have to tie it in slightly different than you would to something that would compress, because this is just basically a bundle of sticks, right? And so if I lose two or three of these hairs, internally because it's not compressible, it's all solid, two or three of those hairs fall out, the whole damn tail falls out. And so people think they can go in and lacquer those or you know, put, fit, put glue on them and finish them. All you're going to have is a hairless, you know, shiny head. Is all you're gonna, if you don't do this right, it won't stay there. So I'm going to take this hair and I'm going to cut it 
I want it to be just the tips to go just a little bit past the tail, right there. And so I'm going to set this first. But the, the tendency is to try to cut this at an angle towards your hand. And I want you to cut it, and I'll cut it towards the thing. Hopefully you can see it. I want it to cut it at a 45 with the shortest hairs on the bottom. And so we're going to come in here. And what that's going to do, and i got a slot come in here and I'm going to make sure it's right to the end and I'm going to build this this is going to be this stuff is really slippery that's a bump I have right there I'm a little bit short and uh, a little bit short of where I wanted that head and I want you to keep a really keep a really tight grip on your thumb and your forefinger so all that hair stays on the top and so it's fighting me so I'm compressing down moving forward now I'm, gonna, I'm getting a nice build, nice and tight. I'm, I'm really, really reefing on this thread right at the edge, right? So the head's about where I want it. I'm going to come in here nice. And, this, and again, right now, if, you know, there's no way I can tell you I could count that. It's probably about a 10 thread count, uh, forward. But I'm just going to build a nice, clean body. Build up where you think you want it, just so it's nice and smooth. probably about 10 wraps to get to the floor of the head, I guess. Just kind of doing it random. I'm going to come in here. So now we've got this cute little, I mean, it's a super thin. I screwed my tail up when I dropped that. Maybe you can help check. When I dropped that thread, I caught that and helped that tail to split it open and pulled it all together. And one or two fish, it'll be all undone anyway. So I used... One thing about these traditional flies, all of them, they have these super shiny heads, which I just think is the prettiest thing to me. And so just came in here with this bottle of lacquer, just got to get it all over. And there you go. It's a super fast fly. It's super fun to tie. And, the, really, and the, the thing is, if you look at this fly, and I'll, I'll put it towards the front here, uh, trying not to grab a hold of that head. When it's wet, it's going to be that little profile like that. It's like a tiny little silhouette, like tiny little minnows like this, especially in the spring when you've got all those young of the year minnows and whitefish and dace and, and your little, you know, your fry. If you're back out, back out east, man, the, you know, your salmon don't go back as, a lot of people think the salmon go back as, as smolt, and they don't, your Chinook especially. They go back in these massive fry bags, right? This is a great little fly for that, just because the trout are just looking for it. They go back by the tens of thousands, these big balls of minnows. And so they're looking for these, you know, smaller, you know, not everything's about eating the biggest thing out there. And it's a super fun fly to fish for, especially for young kids. It's really good to get out. It's not heavy. It's not dangerous. It's not hard to cast. You won't even know it's there. This is also a really good trailer fly if you want to put, like, you know, behind, if you're going to run a double rig, this is a really good one to use in the spring for two fly rigs like that. But more than anything, it's just a really good fly to get your, your tensions down, your wraps even, and learning to set non-compressible hair. You can see this, you can pull this, I'm pulling as hard as I can. It's not going to come undone if you do it right. So it's a functional fly, and it's really fun to tie. I hope you liked it.